Hey everyone, I'm Brian, your watching the Build a Place channel. In this video, I'm going to take these saw horses that I bought, uh, the brackets for, and I'm going to make this more steady. I'm going to use a, a tension type system where I'm going to put this 2x4 in between here so that they can still, so you can still stack these saw horses. And I probably won't stack these saw horses, and I'm definitely not going to keep these two pieces of equipment on there. Just have them on here as a placeholder. So I can make a stand for them. So the last video I did, I put blocks in here, wooden blocks, and that seemed to really help steady up these sawers. But you can do the same thing with this technique. If you the sawers aren't strong enough, you can put this in there. And with the two by four in between, you can still stack them like this without them interfering. Whereas if you put the Crack on the surface, then that spaces it off and they don't, they don't stack as well. So we're going to get this taken apart. Take these, we're going to take these uh, tools off for this saw horse. We're going to measure out where we need this 2x4 to be and drill some holes. And So let's get started on this project. We're going to take this the shear off, get it out of the way. Then take the rotor machine off. So we can put this up on the bench top. We have the uh, saw we're sitting up on the table now. So what I did was I squared up these brackets, these plastic brackets. And then once they're squared up straight, they, they move around a little bit, that twist around. So then I measured between here and got 24 and 3 quarters. So the, the two by fours that are going to go in between here are 24 and 3 quarters. Now, these brackets you can find them. Uh, I bought, like I said, I bought these from a master car. Uh, you can write order these from Lowe's or Home Depot, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description on the part number if there's something you're interested in buying. But they're pretty nice that you can just loosen up, clean up, a couple turns. Two pieces of uh, with cross members, a two by four, and I set up a shopsmith as a boring machine. This works excellent to uh, bore. I've never had a machine quite like this, and it does a great job. You'll see how nice it is to bore. So I have the stops all set up. I want to come down an inch and a quarter, and down the center, and this is a three quarter inch bit because I'm going to put it down down here. You know, you'll see it later, but. That will support this area because they're going to drill a, a hole here where the there's going to be a ring there, metal ring, and then it's going to want to cause this to want to split and pull open. So having that dowel through there will hold this piece so it keep the uh, 
from spill, <laughs> keep it from splitting. So we're gonna bore these bore holes. It's all the way through because it's my stop piece. But this is a Mark V, I guess. I bought this thing used, uh, wow, it's been a long time ago, back in probably 1980. So I haven't used it a whole lot, but uh, it's been an excellent machine, especially doing things like horizontal boring. You just can't get, I've never seen a woodworking piece of equipment that does such a great job at horizontal boring. So. We continue on drawing this. <laughs> Trying to do something like this on a vertical Drill press, you, know, you have to have it in a vise, and yeah, it works good, but this, all oh, the stops are all set, you just lay it flat down on the table. Um, I'm sold. Um, really happy. My next step is just to put a hardwood, three quarter inch hardwood dowel in here. I don't know if I'm going to show much of that, but it's basically just cutting the dowel to the five, four inches long, driving and putting some glue on it and driving it in, and letting that set up. So. I decided to show the installation of the dowel since I'm doing kind of unconventional way of doing them using shot press to install them. So it does a pretty good job. The first one I took with a hammer and it was rough. So that's when I figured just take the shot press and just let it push it on in. I figured if I just slowly press it in with the shot press that it would do so much better job. Cut the dowels a little long, so. Okay, I think that's good. Now that I have the cross boards, they're, they're drying with the dowels in it. I'm gonna decide I'm gonna counter bore this hole that's gonna counter bore the head of the bolt that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna drill the rest of the way through this piece. But let's just counter bore this first, so. flush right now with the the cutting edge is flush with the face so I'm going to set my stop to one half inch and then continue trilling through the counterboard that the half inch I'm going to continue boring the rest of these legs and then we'll come back and drill the, the clearance hole for the bolt. This is the second one. As you see all I did was take a uh, drywall square and just quick clamped it to the table so that gives me a stop every time. Now this is one thing I really like about the shopsmith using the boring tool. So I already bored that, that hole out. Put my 5 16 inch bit in now. So everything is still squared in or still right. So I'm gonna leave everything as is. And all I have to do is loosen up this uh, carriage to let this table slide. So I can put my piece back in. And then I'm going to use this, just a scrap piece of the plywood to put behind it for backing. And then I can release this so that the quill can go as far as it wants to go and then bring this table, just slide it right back and I'm lined up 
perfectly ready to drill that hole without moving almost anything, without having to set anything up. Everything is still exactly where it needs to be. So, so let's just go with it. See my problem right now. I have I'm hitting right here. That's what they kept hearing that noise. So I need to move my something. I guess I had to. It wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, but it's still not that bad. Let's see if I put two pieces of plywood behind here. That should give me the distance I need. So I'm going to get a piece of plywood. Okay, you got two pieces of plywood there, backing that up, so it, I don't think it's going to hit this time, so let's try that again. Get my sleeves rolled back up. Schedule 40. This piece of galvanized pipe will make these inch and a half long. That's the thickness of the two by four that they're going to go through. So just going to clamp that on there. I already got my stop set it at the inch and a half, and just take it, cut four of these. right in the center. I'm making three eighths. Oh, it's a little bit bigger than what the bolts can be, but that should give me a pretty good clearance. Have it all set up, so all you'll do is put the pipe in there and drill right down through it. I don't have to measure anything. It's all just set to go. Piece in a little bit of lubricant, cutting fluid. Okay, complete now. Where I'm going to be putting these in on the piece of two by four, I want to drill a hole that is an inch diameter where these measure just a little bit over an inch so I'm going to be cutting a, uh, cutting a piece out of this so I can compress this down so the OD is is about an inch instead of an inch and I think it's about an inch and a sixteenth right now so I'm gonna... now after the hole is drilled then I go on the opposite side of the hole and I'm going to notch out or I'm going to slice out about a quarter inch gap with a cutoff wheel it's approximation it's nothing exact Measured, I guess. So I'm just going to take make two cuts. Somewhere around a quarter of an inch. I'm going to let that cool off, but that is 
most likely more than a quarter inch, but it's not going to matter for what we're doing. So once that cools down, we're going to crimp this piece in and crimp the other way to make it back to a, about a one inch diameter OD. So they'll fit in the bore that we get ready to drill. What I'm going to do now is just basically try to get this thing down to about one inch OD. So I'll just clamp it this way and then turn it 90 and clamp it that way. And I have a block of wood that I drilled a one inch hole. We'll see how close we are. Still a little tight, so let's break it down a little bit more. It fits in there real easy. Now, some of these are still warm. This one's cooled off a good bit, so we can use it to do this one now. Crimp it down, go the opposite direction, they're 90 degrees out. Pull it a little bit. Fit check it. It's still too tight. So we'll do it again. 90 out. That one fits in there easily. I'm giving the glue time to dry on these dowel rods. Now I want to do is set up to bore this hole. This needs to be just a little over two inches down in. So, and it needs to be centered this way and centered that way. So, the uh, Shasta tool has a nice feature that you can actually lock the uh, miter gauge. So I'm going to set this to one and three quarters of an inch. That should be the center of the two by four. So when it goes in like this, that'll be the center location. So that should be centered right in the, this way. And we already have it centered up and down the uh, three quarters of an inch. So we haven't ever moved anything. So right now as it is, everything is set up. So, but what I want to do is, there again, the nice things about this tool is to slide this table down to there, lock that into place, and then the head, slide that down. Everything falls, actually, nothing moves, and that's what's so nice about this thing. So now, I can hold that just like that, and drill down to my, about two inches, maybe two and a quarter, somewhere that I need to drill down. It's not very critical, just as long as I'm over two, and, but I was over about two and a quarter, I should be fine, so, this board. using the shop smooth. The next step is we're going to need to drill the one inch hole that that metal piece that we made will slide in. So we'll set the machine up for that point of locator. That'll help locate everything. So we want to be, now the table needs to be, I'm going to slide the table back. This one a little bit so I get a good measurement on it one and three quarters of an inch. That'll be the center of the two by four. So I'll set that at one, one and three quarters. It's two and seven eighths back from here. So we'll go two and seven eighths. And then we'll lock the murder gauge in. It keeps wanting to move a little bit, so we'll double check that. It did move. Get it back to seven eighths of an inch. See if it'll stay on now. Okay, it stayed on. So now 
this will be where our one inch bore will go. So we need to set up, set up the, remove this fence. Back right over onto the main table. Bring as close as I can to the, I'll put it right here for Marty gauge. And that should work. And then I'll need a piece of backup wood to go behind here and then put the one inch wood bed on there. So yeah, I have just a piece of scrap wood I'm gonna use for the back end for that. And then let me take this point off, replace it with a one inch bit. Okay, chuck it down tight so it won't go nowhere. And that's the first. I put this together. We're just gonna, well, I'm gonna put this on first before I put it into the thing. But you take the six inch by five, 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 sixteen, five sixteenths by six inches long bolt sticking in the two by four. Make sure you got that lined up right. Get one of your inserts, slide that in, make sure the hole is lined up with the hole that you bored. Kind of tight a little bit, but it's going in okay. A little bit jumping. Make sure you're always lined up. And then I just take a pair of needle nose pliers to hold it because it's pretty, it's pretty narrow down in there to get your finger in. Not to go in there, just hold on to it. Just going the right direction. And you basically just tighten up and then the nuts, there's a square nut, it's gonna hit the it's gonna hit on the edge of the So that piece of pipe, and just tighten it down. We have one set of legs done, so we can put those on this side. So wait, let's get everything done before we jump in there. That leg, that leg makes two. Get my 5 16 inch bolt. Put it in. Get my insert. Line up the hole right. Put that in. Just tap over the back of the Take my new nose pliers and hold it. And get my ratchet and tighten the nut up. Square this up a little bit. Just enough to square that up a little bit. That's all. Twist it on. I didn't have a flat on the bench. If I had a flat on the bench, it would have lined up so much better. It's flat on the bench now. Okay, 
okay, we have the cross pieces all put in. So let's put these back on the saw horses on the top cap.